I'm too shy for that stuff. That's... How now, brown cow? Amber's got to delch out today. It's official. It's, it's official. It... it took whatever, what episode is it, six? What are, uh, we, what are we at? Something I mean, like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, are they, I'm going to ask a question that I shouldn't ask on my own podcast. Uh, are our podcasts like up now? Can you listen to them? No, like I don't, I don't know this not answer. Yet. Okay, no, all right. Yet. Okay, very good. Now, that was a good question. Then that was a very that was question. a good question. That was legit. Yeah. Now we're, we're, we're getting ahead because there, there's a big plan to um, rework a lot of this stuff into uh, a, a <laughs> tremendous amount of digital assets, uh, videos, and stuff like that. And so there's a lot going on behind the scenes where we're basically just trying to figure out how the hell to do that. And we're working with a with a video team who's really really good, almost too good. And, and they, um, they want things to be done like really, really well and like polished mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is great. It's going to create a big, a great product. The problem is all of us just like, don't know how the internet works. eh? <laughs> and so we just, you know, we're, we're, we're muscle monkeys. Like we just like lift stuff up and put it down. Amber clearly just like <laughs> lateral raises all day to work her delts. And Let's we don't know how race. to do any of this. Like what was the, what was the email I'm going to throw um, Jocelyn under the bus here? Cause See you know, she, she sent it. an email. Yeah. She sent an email. Um, the audio must match the bit rate of Jonathan. He is recording in 48 KHZ, but one guest is in 44.1 KHZ. I mean, like, so this is why the podcast isn't live yet, because clearly none of us know (laughs) that KHZ were letters that ever repeated after one another for anything ever in the English language. And and so that's what's been going on behind the scenes, Ren. Um, Aren't you glad you're you're not a part of it? Can I just tell you how offended I am by, by what you just read? I feel personally offended by what you why, just read. Why is that? Because that why doesn't that? make any sense. I consider myself a man of intellect, John. I consider okay. I'm a reasonably intelligent man. I have no idea what the hell you just said. Uh, I've <laughs> yeah, just I realized mean, that this is this entire production is so far over my head. Uh, right. I've you know, I'm just going to sit here and wait, wait till I can think of jokes. So let's segue that. this. So let's segue this. So when something is your domain, things obvious to you are not obvious to others. This hit me like a ton of bricks <laughs> years back. I was in the gym and I had a workout partner. His name was Logan and I worked out with him for years. And he was not in the fitness industry. At that point, he was a pilot. He is now an air traffic controller. And, and, we like and so... It's Amber's ex. <laughs> who and, knows? But he was like, he was like a super fit guy who, you know, because he was a pilot and stuff like that. When he was there, he would like train hard and consistently come in the middle right. of the day, which was great. So he was a great training partner for me. And we, we, we worked out for years. And after workout one day, we were just like having a barbecue. My parents lived around the corner from the gym. We went there, we had a barbecue. And I, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but we were talking about something to do with like muscle stuff. And I was mm-hmm. talking about muscle cross bridge formation and actin and myosin filaments and how they connect and, and how that's how muscle, muscle grows. And it, that's how hypertrophy happens is they tear apart and all. And, you know, I didn't get into like the intricacies of like the mTOR, like rapamycin, like, like I didn't get into the intricacies of it, but just like stuff no, that was- that's so obvious to us as trainers, like what the word hypertrophy means even. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember. I don't, again, I don't remember exactly how I said it, but what I do remember was that I said it kind of like a conceited jackass. <laughs> and the only reason that I remember this is because he stopped me at one point and he just looked at me and he's just like, what's the average takeoff velocity for a Boeing 747? <laughs> and I just, I just, I was like, damn, son, you just put me in my place. Like what is so <laughs> obvious to you in your profession is just completely foreign to me. And I think anybody who works, partic- I mean, any industry, it doesn't matter what it is, but like anybody who works in the fitness industry, you have to understand that the language that you're using and what you're speaking about, it, that is so common amongst people who you spend the vast majority of your time with, is completely foreign to basically everybody you're ever going to sell anything to, unless you're like me and you sell the majority of your things to people who work in fitness. And, and even then... I use very simple language and I, if I ever use jargon, I basically make fun of myself for using jokey science terms. Um, And and so I think it's just important to like every once in a while kind of check oneself 
like that before you wreck one. Before you wreck yourself? So, I can chickety, feel it coming. Chickety check. Check yourself before you... You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And then he says something is bad for your health. And I think it's like messing with Ice Cube is bad for your health. I think that's what he says something like that. I don't I don't know. I feel like messing with Cube Ice fan. Cube in your 90s was probably bad for your health. I feel like yeah. now... Ice Cube has melted a little bit. The temperature has gone up. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like he's, I don't think he's, he's in bad for your health anymore. He's not at true 32 anymore, Fahrenheit or zero. <laughs> like, he's probably 34-ish, 35-ish yeah. Fahrenheit. Yeah. You know, two two or three. You know, there's, there's a there's a drip around the cube. Uh, it's not it's not the iciest cube anymore. You know, his son is it. Did you know his son was an actor? Did you know that Ice Cube Jr. Uh, is an actor? Ice Cube Jr. I'm giving you guys mm-hmm. some good information here. This is going to be a yeah, riveting. I want to, I want to know about this. You're giving us good information, and you're doing it almost like a DJ because your mic keeps or your internet keeps cutting out a little bit. So it's <laughs> like it? wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, and, and so it's like so it's it's good information, and it's in context, even though it's technical difficulty. So yeah, go on. <laughs> Sidebar: I'm in a different <laughs> room in the apartment today because yeah, okay. they are working on the floor in okay. the main area. Mm. So. Someone's going to knock inappropriately in just a minute from the apartment yeah, sure. complex. He's going to bang on the door okay. during this podcast, and I'm going to rush away to let them in. And then we're going to have a very a very strenuous conversation because they are going to speak fluent Spanish. <laughs> Good. And, I, and I'm going to speak fluent English. Yes. And there's going to be no crossover in that conversation. <laughs> going back <laughs> no to what we were just talking about, about how things very natural to you are segway unnatural to, to- – Segway in like a boss – uh, so so like at, listen to this disruptive conversation about so Ice Cube's son played mm-hmm. Ice Cube in the movie about Ice Cube and them uh, the uh, the straight out they were straight out of Compton Jonathan uh, they, but I they don't left. think Ice Cube's son grew up in Compton I think he no grew he's up in like he's Beverly Hills, he's, he's not a product of the yeah. Compton area yeah, that's what I'm uh, saying. You know, but he yeah, was in. He, he Jaden Smithed it. You know what I'm saying? Right. He Jaden Smithed it. He played his father, or Calvin Goodman did. Uh, he played his father <laughs> in yeah. the. If you had a. Let me ask you. you forget want. about this story. It's stupid anyway. Let okay. me ask you a real question here, Jonathan. Yeah, this is important. If there was a Jonathan Goodman movie, uh-huh. at first, what, what would the title. I think the title should be like uh, Viral Nomics. That's a great. That's a great title for a movie. That would get mm-hmm. me in the theaters right away. Sounds I'm like a zombie you. movie. What, yeah, a z- zombie movie called Viralnomics. Would Calvin Goodman play Jonathan? Does he have? Does the kid have the chops to play you, Jonathan? Can he pull it? Can he get bearded? How quick can Calvin grow a beard at this point? Like, is he bearded yet? Calvin is not bearded yet. Well, Calvin's half Asian, right? So we don't know right, whether he's right. going to get like the Asian or like the Eastern European Jewish genes. And so if he gets the okay, Asian genes, okay. he will never be bearded. He'll have like two straggly hairs on his face. <laughs> if he, is, gets, if he gets if he gets the Eastern European Jewish genes, then he's going to have too much hair all over every ounce of his body, and he's not going to know <laughs> what to do with these eyebrows on my face that I just they're just they're out of hand. Right, right. Now my mom, this- my mother actually said to me, uh, actually said to Allison about me. She said, and I quote, that boy has far too much eyebrow for one face. <laughs> I like your mom. Yeah. <laughs> but she, the commentary insinuates that she had nothing to do with the production of the product, though. Like, mm. she, like she in no way was a participant in the assembly line of creating Jonathan Goodman. <laughs> and somehow she could disassociate herself totally with said features like that. That's a if you if you ask me, I think she's kind of phoning it in, man. Like she can't she can't say that she created. The I think Jonathan that's why she Goodman. can say it. She's like I overbaked oh, him just maybe a little so. bit. But maybe she didn't, so. She didn't. She didn't create the eyebrows part of me. Um, in, in terms of your question, uh, which which actor would I think would play me in music? I a movie. I think it would be Paul Rudd. And the only reason that I say that, not because he's good looking, the only reason I say that is because he does a really good job of hiding his Jewishness in movies. Mm, mm, that makes sense. So Plus I think he would be the one. He's got good follicles, great follicles on Paul. Right? You, like if you look at his facial hair in uh, mm-hmm. in Anchorman, you know, versus say in Avengers, versus say the Ghostbusters, the newest Ghostbusters, which was yeah, great by the way. That. The newest Ghostbusters. I know Jonathan doesn't watch media, so I get having dude, these I conversations get so bored. with him. Can we talk about this? I get. I tried to turn on Netflix the other night because we actually had a night where I could watch like an hour of TV because the kids went to bed earlier for whatever reason. 
And, and I, so I put on Netflix. I was like, oh, I'm going to relax and like watch some Netflix and whatever. I got so bored out of my mind watching it, man. I turned it off and put on a book. I tried like three or four of the different like new like sitcoms and stuff like that. And I just couldn't, I, maybe it's my attention span or something, but I think, I think with these shows, they're so serialized now that you have to really get into them. Mm-hmm. And right. I knew that I wouldn't. So I chose like the dumb comedy ones because that's generally what I like. Right. But I, I couldn't I couldn't get into it. I mean, I'd rather like go for a walk and listen to a podcast or I'd rather like read a book. And like I'm not talking about like smug podcasts, like the Conan O'Brien podcast is one of my favorite ones. And it's it's right. nonsense. Like like it's not like it's not like, oh, I feel like you have to be bettering yourself. Nah, like have fun, like listen to dumb, funny things. But but I just couldn't I just couldn't do it. You anyway, gotta go for stand up. I wanna, I, I wanna yeah, I mean stand up I I like stand up live a lot. I have a hard time watching. Mm-hmm. Stand up on TV on Netflix if I'm with a group of friends is amazing. If I'm just like by myself in my underwear, like in mm-hmm. bed, you know, I'm like watching on my phone a thing of stand up. I'm like, eh, this doesn't quite do it for me. Um, okay. I'm, I, I want to talk about, I want to start with a number today. Okay. Can we do that? Do it. Uh, so I wrote down this number. Um, on our sheet, 2,114,540. And I wrote that down like 30 minutes ago. Um, I'm going to give you a new number, which is 2,270,219. And that's the number of accounts reached of a post that I put up two days ago on Instagram. And um, so, so this post is going super, super viral. Um, and it's led to a huge number of new followers and stuff like that. And I don't, I, I, I bring it up for a few reasons. Number one is if you both remember, I mean, somebody listening might not remember, but if you guys remember last year at in and around this time, I decided that I was going to commit to social media for at least two years was the commitment mm-hmm. to myself. It was like, I was like, like it was like platform growth, Jonathan Goodman platform growth is going to be my primary focus for a minimum of two years. That was the commitment that I made to myself. Mm-hmm. And the reason that I said that was, um, a, I just, I didn't know, like, like I knew that quick coach was coming out. I wanted to, to give that a platform, but also like, I didn't know what the next phase of my life was going to be, but I knew that if I focused all of my time on building the platform around myself, whatever I decided the next phase of my life and career was going to be, I could feed it with that platform. So it just seemed like a good use of time, like in between times. And I think that's kind of the lesson. Number one is something that I've learned is like the best like if you aren't one, if you aren't actively working on a project, you should be working on increasing your own reputation and reach and platform. Like like just default, like that's what you're doing. And then if you're like all in on a project, maybe that can go on the back burner for a little bit, like maybe not depending on, on what you do. And so what was interesting was I looked back at this and yesterday to see when I started and it was November 6th, 2021 which was the exact day that I looked back on and started because it's November 7th right now when we're recording this. And, uh, and yeah, so it was exactly one year. So exactly one year to the date where I made a commitment to myself that I was going to focus on platform growth. I start going like insanely viral, which is just kind of, it's like, you can't make this shit up, first of all. But what I really wanted to hit on was this post that's going super viral, not a, it, it has five different basically like slides of like information. They're all different. Not any of them are new. They've all been used before and they've all been used multiple times before. And so number one is the importance of, or the importance of just consistency. And so if you're, like looking at your own platform and hoping that things are going to grow. Like I have published every single day for a year now straight. How many things have you done to like better your business where you've actually taken some proactive action for the future, at least once a day, every single day for a year. And I am one half to one third 
in the journey that I committed to myself to do. Um, number two is taking in feedback on what works and what doesn't work. It's, it's, it's very easy. What was the line that you used in the podcast last week, Ren, where you talked about um, <laughs> basically, basically just like you get wrapped up in your own head and you need to actually just do stuff. And yeah, I don't. I make up far too much of what I say to know what I say. <laughs> it was far too much. It was a good line. Go back and listen to the last episode, episode five, if you want. But the idea behind it was that you actually have no idea like what's going to work and what's not going to work. And you can ask a coach, like Ren was referring it as he is a coach to a lot of our online trainer academy students and helps them with their social media and helps them with the platform and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, Ren, should I do this? Should I put flyers up around the neighborhood or should I do this on social media or should I do that? And Ren's answer is always like, I don't know what's going to work for you. Can you do all of it and take in feedback? And then whatever works, you do more of that and less of what doesn't work. And that's lesson number two is it is actually much better to try a whole bunch of different things, take in feedback of what works and do more of what works. There seems to be this, this push on all of us. And I feel it too, of like, if something works, you're like, oh, great. Now I need to do something else. You should actually just do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And you can repeat yourself often. It's my dating and, philosophy. Yeah, there you go. That's Tell how me you get about the your babes. dating life, friend. Yeah. Tell me about your dating life. That's enough. Continue. <laughs> so close. <laughs> thought, one day, thought you had one, one day. <laughs> one day we will find out at least one personal fact about Ren. Born in uh, April, but not last April, Jonathan. Please continue. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the next point that I want to bring up is that reach and engagement and success and all these things is going to ebb and flow. And there are going to be times when things are like popping off and going nuts. Like I have two posts that I've posted in the last five days that both have over a million reach. And it's just, it's just like right now, as we speak, I'm probably gaining 10 to 20 new followers a minute. And, but like maybe a month ago, I posted on my Facebook page about how Instagram was effectively dead about how there's just nothing that I could do. Like I was putting out stuff that I thought was great and, and people were responding to it and there was good engagement and it just like would never hit search, would never like, like it just like died off and it was super, super frustrating. But the conclusion that I made there is like, there are some things that are just unpredictable. And what's important is that when it's going really, really well, you don't stop. And you keep doing more of what's working when it's going really, really well. Like the first thing that I did yesterday as this thing was like really starting to pop off is I messaged five of my friends who are big flat platforms. And I was like, hey, can you do me a solid and, and share this? Mm -hmm. Like like you will get more when something's popping off and doing well by putting way more effort into that than doing something else. But the other part of it on the other end is like most of the time this will not be happening. And when things are not going that well, it's important to just just keep pushing, just keep publishing, just keep doing the work day in and day out. Think about it with workouts. Every 10 workouts, six are going to be fine, three are going to feel horrible, and one is going to feel great. And you got to push through the six that are fine and the three that are horrible. Uh, and, and, and over time, that's how you grow. It's the same type of thing. The next point is the importance of reusing content. A tiny percentage of your people will ever see any piece of content that you ever put out. You can reuse stuff. This is me giving you permission. I reuse stuff basically all of the time. It's actually pretty rare these days that I write new content. What I do is I rework it in different ways. And so I'll take the same post that I've published somewhere else and I'll take a new hook for that post, for example, and I'll lead in with a new hook and it'll be the same post. And I'll rework it different ways, but I have like quote unquote winners, like stuff that I know resonates that, that I feel like represents me well and my philosophy well, that resonates well, that shares well, like I'm gonna keep using that stuff. And, and here's the kicker, not a single person ever, quite literally not one ever has messaged or commented and said, yo, I've seen this before. And I'm telling you right now, my account has reached over 3 million people in the last two days. 
and not a single message from somebody. And and every single piece of content that that's reached out that has been used before, usually multiple times. So if something's working, <laughs> keep working it, man. You can reuse it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the final point that I want to bring up is you need to earn the right to educate. It's not an inherent right. Just because you feel like you have something that can benefit people, you have to earn the right to be able to have the audience that is going to trust you enough to listen and respond to that. That can be a really frustrating hurdle to get over. And so there was viral content and then there's value content. The day after I posted this that started going viral, I posted a really in-depth 10-slide carousel about how to start and grow your online training business. Super detailed. Well, that post has basically no shares. Like, you know, whereas this one has 15,000 shares. The other one has like 150. But, the, but that post has still been seen by 70 or 80,000 people only because I do that other stuff that gets all of the eyeballs. And so you, you can't just do one. If you only do like viral stuff, you're never really adding real value to people. Mm -hmm. And so you've got you've to own the right to educate. It's not an inherent right. And I thought that this post was going to be just a really good opportunity to just kind of bring all of these points home about a whole bunch of stuff that I feel like kind of frustrates people about social media because it frustrates the hell out of me too sometimes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, repeat stuff. It's fine. Go for it. I repeat all the time. Um, and you, I had a conversation with a, with a coach, uh, an online trainer, academy coach, coach in the academy. And the two things that I said to this coach, one was, um, when you repeat a message, I told him it's impossible to repeat a message for, an, for another human. It's impossible because the human lives in between the two times that they've seen the same message oh, and the living that I they've like done that informs lot. how they review and perceive the message. You can say right. one thing one time and I can read it another time after a set of circumstances have occurred in my life and I will view that message entirely differently. You need to give humans the ability to grow in between your repetitive messaging. Uh, he thought that was insightful. I thought it was too. I can see um, John trying to like internalize yes. this and oh, save gosh. it. <laughs> he's trying to get a quote card out of it so he can yep, use it he's for thinking. himself. Yeah, he's Darth, that. Amber, Darth, write that down. Darth Goodman is back. He put the hood up when I said that. So I know evil is afoot. Um, the well, second I thing. I think about Go ahead, Let's stick on this point. I think this is such. I, I think that's one of the. Um, wisest, most insightful points. I mean, you say a lot of smart things. I give you a lot of shit, but you say a lot of smart <laughs> things. But I, I think that's one of the wisest, most insightful points that's been brought up on our podcast by anybody, me included. And, um, and so I want to dwell on it a little bit because it's not just about like pithy, like things you say on social media, right? It, it, there's so many layers to what you just said. There are certain books that I try to read once a year. And the reason for that is to me, a really, really impactful book has layers to it. And that's one of the reasons why it's so impactful is because it connects with different people who are at different stages of their journey and helps them get to that next stage. And at every point in our life, if you think about what we're doing as humans, we're always just trying to get to that next step, that next step, that next step. No matter where we are, we're trying to get to that next step. It, it's just a continual growth process. And, and so what I do is I'll, I'll pick up a book and I'll highlight stuff, right? And I'll mark it. I'll, I mark the shit out of my books and I'll mark the book and I'll underline it and I'll write notes and emergence and stuff like that. And then I'll pick up that same book a year later and I'll be like, why did I think that that was important? And then I take a step back. And I say, well, it's because I've had a year of growth in between then. I now have internalized this point. And what a what a what a what a wise statement, Ren. Yeah, I'd be saying that. stuff. Um yeah, yeah. So, and then the other thing I told him is that you're just not that important to the internet. You're just not yeah, important uh, enough to the internet. For people to, to say, oh, to anybody, <laughs> you're just not important enough for people to say, you said that two weeks ago. And I remember it vividly that it was like that, dude, nobody knows you. Nobody cares. The Rock could post something twice. 
you know, Oprah Winfrey, I mean, Trump, who like anybody, and you're just not going to like the Internet just doesn't work that way. People aren't taking it to heart. It's, well, whoever it's acts five, on advice the first time anyway, like right. I have to be I mean, told 10 times before I do something. <laughs> right. I mean, it's the Internet. The, the Internet, I feel a slow jam coming on. The Internet is five seconds of sweet, sweet love, baby. And that's it. You get five seconds of pleasure, baby. And once you're gone, I forget all about you. Because I don't need you like that. And you don't need me like that. But we serve each other. We're not here for a long time, baby. We're here for a good time. That's what the internet is, man. Like, people don't remember after, like, Jonathan. Jonathan Goodman. If I may call you Jonathan Goodman. Uh, you can call Amber. me whatever you want right now. All right. All right. And, and Amber, so. You, <laughs> oh, if I had a dollar for every Jewish man that told me that, Jonathan. Um, but what I'm saying is, like. People don't care past the click, right? There's a click on to your page. There's a click off. After the click off, it's done. Like, it, it might as well have never existed. Everybody is trying to assess how whatever they're doing is going to make them look towards others. Right. So if they click or they comment or they share, they're very rarely doing that because they're like, oh, this is like, something that I feel like can like benefit somebody. No, they're doing that because they're like, this is how I might look good in the eyes of somebody else 100%. in order to improve my own social status. 100%. And so that's like the internet in a, in a, in a nutshell. So if you can give away for somebody to feel like they are improving how they look towards others. Yes. It's all about there's gonna be some action. But, but yeah. my point was, you know, I talk to coaches every single day of the week. And most of the time we talk about the internet because I'm a coach in the online trainer academy. Mm. And hell, dude, I don't remember. I don't remember what my favorite post was yesterday. And and I am in the business of dissecting posts, figuring out what words were used, how it can best, you know, uh, you know, how it can best improve a business. Yeah. If a gun to my head, literally gun to my head. Ren, can you give me three words out of your favorite post yesterday? I got no damn clue. I don't know. There was one with the dog. Like, and and I'm 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 paid to and trained to pay close right. attention to the internet. The casual right. average person who wants to lose 10 pounds, they you can say it again tomorrow. I, I had this conversation today too. Well, I tried to enroll people last week. Won't I look silly trying to enroll people this week? I'm like People last nobody week don't remembers. know you enrolled anybody. Like yeah. nobody knows, bro. Like you, you well, are. That's what we always say to people. It's like, oh, I did a, I did a launch three weeks ago, right. and um, <laughs> and and you know, do you think I should? Do you think I should like ask people if they want training again, or is it too soon? I'm like, you should have done that two weeks and six <laughs> days ago, dude. Right. Like y'all walking down the street, and you're hungry and you want a sandwich. And you walk by a store and it's a sandwich st store, but you don't know that because it doesn't have a sign right. and the door is locked and the blinds are down and you walk on right by because you never knew that was a sandwich shop, but you want a sandwich and you're hungry. Well, then you go by the next day and that sandwich shop is still closed. You're not thinking, oh, shit. Well, that sandwich shop was open two weeks ago. <laughs> if I can segue, maybe the topic that I I have, I have two topics, and one of I them. I saw. I'm very. These were like the first two ones that you've put in. I know because okay. I'm very selective because I get nervous. So one of the topics that I chose, which I think is a good segue here, is attorney for the Totnes monster. So there is this attorney called James Quinn McQuinn, and his form of advertising cracks me up and it almost always goes like viral because it's super funny um, let me see if i can okay. pull it up and i'll share my screen as i have well. i have it open oh so you what do does he do so he's an he's an attorney so this um if you start looking in the screenshots his way yeah. of of advertising is very simple and very funny and it creates that that's so me or i totally relate to this or i get this or i know somebody who's like this or whatever kind of feeling and so like one of the things we talk about is is um uh if this is you uh or the, this is you then this is for you kind of line right and i feel like right. this falls into that so well 
with a huge dose of humor and everybody likes sharing funny stuff. But I don't I don't really understand his stuff. You so, don't? so explain to me. Well like accidentally marry the thoughtness. So monster. I don't know what that is, is that, that is slang that I am not cool enough to understand. I think yeah, may, okay. may I help you guys with Yes that? please. Yeah, what's the, yeah, the the thought is the as, is this uh, an act of ask the black guy moment? Wait, can I Yeah, this is ask the black guy. Wait, 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 yeah, wait. This, okay, hold on, hold on before you begin. Wait. Amber. Do we have a jingle? Oh my god! Oh my god! That's the best thing that I will hear today. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> I found him on on Fiverr. His name is Jordan. He is such a good sport. Oh <laughs> I have additional voice clips of him saying it in different oh. ways. So if you want it, let oh. me know, and I will send it to you. I want Jordan to be my personal announcer at every He's door on that Fiverr. I enter. Oh, I want him. Well, I want him I think, to go to I Mike. Think, Amber, what we do is we do we use those different clips every single time. Oh, we yeah, I will rotate them. I will do I that. Need to, I need to hear all of those. Uh, mm. In any case, so the thought I w- I won't give the details of the acronym because it's, it's relatively vulgar, but it's T H O T, and the thought is the 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 loose woman who parties and you know engages in. Uh, how can like I'm trying to find a way to say this that doesn't get the FCC involved? Um, <laughs> that engages in you know overtly promiscuous behaviors. Um, <laughs> that's the best way. She's I get. everyone's best friend. <laughs> yeah, she's everyone's best friend, right? That's a Got thought. It. Uh, <laughs> and and so he married a what? A thought? A thought? A, a thoughtless, thoughtless monster. monster. So he's he's an attorney, right? And so yeah. he has like these just short witty uh things that he shares so like if your spouse has a snapchat save this number uh or Or this this one's my favorite this is my favorite can i read one yeah want to get divorced so you can marry the home wrecker that's cold hit me up though yeah (laughs) (laughs) if you're if you ride 10 and 2 if you ride 10 and 2 in the right lane i just assume you're moving weight call this number (laughs) so it's just right and so it's funny but also just kind of goes to show you don't have to be you don't have to try that hard to sell like i think we overanalyze it and we have to like hit all of these points but he's speaking at a level that his demographic likely speaks at right and it's on a on a level that they understand and like they think it's funny and it gets shared. And so he's really popular. And in, from what I can tell, he's actually good at his job on top of that. But he shares all of these like different memes and it's all like, here's my number. Hit me up. It's just simple and it works. Simple. He's a relaxed lawyer because, you know, but now it seems to me as if, if if the target demographic is is my community. That's what it seems like to me by what he's saying. Or anyone that's sort of hip on pop culture slang, right? Mm-hmm. Sort of Sort of that. Sort of that Saturday Night Live demographic. You know, yeah. Saturday Night Live is really good for taking very, very relevant, immediate cultural references and sending it out to the masses in a way that you have to have some type of understanding of what's going on to to to, to, to understand it. But uh, moving weight, colloquialism for selling drugs, moving weight. Well, moving oh, I thought weight. it was a dead body. No, no, that's what I, I got that one. That one's selling drugs. Oh. You see, case Bamboo, in point, we are right? So not cool. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. We are so not. Cool. My my favorite though is: Does your car keep doing that thing where you get in it and suddenly you have tickets? <laughs> <laughs> or, like, um, that doesn't. It's not my fault. It's just the car. You know? Yeah. Well, it's like was... it's like that really famous ad, fitness ad. Um, that's like, um, tired of being ugly and fat. Right. Just be ugly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> you know? I love that. And I need mean, I need to do more of that. I think you well, would rock yeah. at that. You, you would rock at that. <laughs> you would I know I know that. a lot of different cultural references. That that would that would work well for me. Yes, uh, so would. by the way, Papa Swolio showed up in my feed yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, there you go. And it it doesn't normally and, and I watched the videos like five seconds and he did what Papa Solio does. Um, who's the? What's the lawyer's <laughs> name though? I missed it while I was going to answer my doors for people. James to work McQuinn. My okay, James McQuinn. 
uh, yeah, James and McGuire. I'm going to say this in the mic and discreetly because the person that's in my home right now can hear this. But the guy brought a damn radio in here and he's listening to the radio. And that's what you guys heard. I just had to close the door because he brought his own floor fixing music. I guess it's it, almost you know, always. Guess, yeah, I've I done a lot of house stuff and that's almost to, a given. Yeah. I'm like, what WTF do? Like, uh, uh, any, any case, music. I digress. <laughs> But it's the radio, like like we're talking it's FM just, radio. It's it's it sounds like the radio, Jonathan. I, oh, I don't know. Maybe okay. it's I don't know. Good, good but, for him. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a set of headphones in a minute. Um, <laughs> in any case, I digress. I don't know that he would have understood what I said if I was talking shit anyway. So I, I, I don't know. But I just want to be a gentleman. Um, well, that was a good one, Amber. That goes back. That goes back to a theme of like you're just. It's like most of the time you are just making it way too complicated. Like, it, like it's it's way simpler. You got to be way more direct. You've got to know like what problems you solve. Like that's these are the problems this guy solves. Like somebody wants <laughs> and to they're run very off the specific. Homework. Like they're very specific, <laughs> right? Somebody problems. wants to run off of the homework, or it's like, what could you do as a trainer? You could just be like, got a got a girl who turned you down years ago in your high school union coming back. Make her feel like shit about herself. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> like you know, you could just. It's, <laughs> But that's so that's so relevant though. That, that came I, a little too quickly to you, John. Do you have a story to share? <laughs> Damn it, Candace Quark. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I wasn't. Uh, was I tuned down a lot? Yeah, I mean I, I was, um, but it doesn't. I don't hold anything against them. You know, I just. I did. Oh my gosh! There's a great yeah, special. Right. Oh, I can't remember his name. He did. Uh, I'm not going to remember it. Never mind. I won't remember. That's all right. You don't have to remember. Jonathan, how early did you have a beard? <laughs> this is a question that I never asked, but it, when you said high school, I, I why have I never asked that? Because it's, not, in, not in high school, no. no not, not in high, in high school. school. Really? It's um, so full and lush. It's like the you. Amazon. Yeah. I like I when know. men give, maybe, give other men compliments. Like, That's so nice. Maybe like end of high school. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. uh, I mean, All pretty right. early for sure. My dad used to have to shave twice at work because this is like back in the old school when, when you had to be like really clean shaven clean and like shaving. proper for work. Yeah. And um, and he would he would shave in the morning before he went to like the health center to the YMCA to like work out. He'd shave there. And then uh, at lunchtime, he'd shave again. Really? Because it would just, it was like the Homer Simpson thing, you know, he'd walk out, he'd shave and then he'd walk out and it would be like, and it would just pop, his beard would just like pop back on his face. Yeah, oh man. Happen. You know, you yeah. know what I got? I got another question down there. I don't know this podcast going. Okay. And, mean, then literally, do, and then I want to do, and then I want to do one more and then right. I got to pee. So we might have to end this early because no, let's, let's way start. too much water. Let's, yeah. let's go with, let's go with yours, Jonathan. I don't, I don't want to run, run the risk of that pee thing. I don't need we're going to go with one of mine. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Let me, let me give you, let me give you a, um, let me give you a couple options. Uh, right. Whales and minnows, uh, permission launches, or Project Odin. Was that Odin? What like O-D-I-N? O-D-I-N. Like Thor's right. dad? I got to go yeah, there. I, I really got to pee, so let's, let's speak. Yeah, go, 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 go Odin. Go. It's, like, it's like two and a half questions. Just, Odin, go Odin. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to start the story at the end. So Project Odin, um, I, I was having lunch with somebody who we all know, Dr. John Brody, years back. Mm. And I told him about Project Odin. And if, for anybody who's ever, like, actually spent time with the guy, it's very rare that he will ever, like, tell you what he thinks. He's, he's a coach at heart. He'll ask you questions, right? And he'll help mm -hmm. you clarify your own thinking. But he very rarely will be like, no, this is what I think you should do. Like, like, like this might be the only time he's ever done this with me. And so... I called him up one day and I said, Hey, you know, I'd really love to put something by you. Like, you know, will you like, like, Hey mentor, please like mentor me. Right. And so I drove to him and we had lunch and I told him about it and I was all excited about it. And he kind of just, he, he's, he's quiet for a few seconds and he looks at me and he goes, you know, this is a great idea for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best backhand compliment I have ever heard. <laughs> and so that's how I'm going to start what Project Odin is. Project Odin was something that we worked on as a company for about six months. 
And it was, it was pretty all in. Like, like we had multiple team members. This is four or five years ago, maybe even more than that now. But we had a lot of our team members on it and we were doing tremendous amounts of research. And what it was, it was something called a two-sided marketplace. So two-sided marketplaces, if you're not familiar with the term, you're certainly familiar with what they are. Basically, what it means is that the entire goal of the marketplace of the business is to connect the consumer and the provider. And so the company doesn't actually sell anything itself often. It's just the connection between the people who sell it. Airbnb, Uber, right? Like, like they don't actually, Airbnb, I mean, I don't know, maybe they have their own Airbnbs, but like for the most part, the entire, um, the entire business is to connect people who have properties with people who want properties and, and whatnot. So that's what a two-sided marketplace is, right? Two-sided marketplaces are um, the most difficult businesses to start because for, for two reasons. One of them is in most businesses, you have one customer. Right now, if you're a B2B business, your customers might be other businesses. If you're a consumer facing business, your customer might be consumers. But in a two sided marketplace, you actually have two customer segments that have radically different needs, different marketing, different desires, different goals. And so you actually have to um, effectively double your work and appeal to two entirely different customer segments mm -hmm. at the same time, which is almost impossibly difficult. The second really difficult part of it is that um, you, if, if you have a two-sided marketplace, well, one side of the marketplace doesn't want to show up unless the other side of the marketplace is there, but they won't be there unless the first side of the marketplace is there. So it's a catch-22. Mm -hmm. How do you get the, 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 the houses? How do you get the rental properties if you don't have people who want to rent it? Well, people who want to rent it are not going to show up unless there's a lot of properties. And the only way around this for the most part is either you just like luck on something and it grows organically over a really long period of time, or you infuse an absolutely tremendous amount of money into it because, and, and that's what you see with Airbnb, with Uber and stuff like that. Like these companies run hundreds of millions of dollars in the negative every single year because they know it's kind of a winner take all and they know that the winner of this is going to be worth billions and billions and billions. But in the meantime, we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars in investment because the customer acquisition costs, remember they're double because mm -hmm. there's two customers, are massive, massive, massive. And you need a huge amount of both in order to satisfy both or else you have nothing. There's kind of no in between. Almost impossible business to grow. Project Odin was a was an idea for a two-sided marketplace in the fitness industry for trainers. And it was based off of a very, very similar model with teachers. That's called teacher pay teacher. And so I own the domain trainer pay trainer. And what it was going to be is there's, there's a lot of things that trainers use over the course of their day or need or don't have, but would use that other trainers already have. We're talking everything from workout templates to, um, operational documentation to assessment forms to like white label articles. Like I wrote an article on low back health that any gym could use in their newsletter. And so I wrote this article and now I license the use of this article to anybody who buys it on the other side of this marketplace. Right? So a trainer might be both a producer and a consumer of this. And this is, this is what teacher pay teacher is. So teacher pay teacher is like a $500 million business. It's a huge business, probably more than that now. And, and if you speak to any teacher, they basically all heard of it and most of them use it. And it's where they buy like lesson plans, handouts, like that type of thing. And so teachers who are just like really good at making handouts, like they don't just make a handout for their kindergarten class. Now they put it on this thing and other teachers download and buy it. And then this teacher, and, and now it's gotten to the point where a lot of teachers just make so much money off of that, that now they're not teachers anymore. They just like build handouts and stuff. And so I really wanted to do this for the personal training industry. And so we went into a huge research iteration phase where um, wanted to figure out how two-sided marketplaces work. Also wanted to figure out how like really complicated like search functions work within websites. And so if you think about the types, if you think about even a, a task as um, seemingly simple as categorization 
it's, it's, it's very, very complicated because there's so many different categories of what you want. And if you have this thing where anybody can upload whatever they want, you have to have a really intelligent system to sort them and help people find what they're looking for as quickly as possible that also trust the system. So then, of course, there's a rating system and all that kind of stuff. So we were studying all of this, right? And, and we were like, what we did is we split them into research sprints. We did one week research sprints, though they probably should have been two, where everybody kind of went off and like researched different websites and everything from, I mean, all over the net where, you know, we did like computer websites to um, poor Alex Cartmill. We had him research pornography websites because like you want to talk about categorization of tremendous amounts of user generated <laughs> content like pornography Poor websites right so he just he just shows up Suffer. to every single meeting like increasingly bearded and like hasn't had sunlight in like weeks with like a hood on he's like hey guys so i went in really deep this week <laughs> but satin Alex. gloves His satin gloves um <laughs> But the reason the reason why I thought that that I would have been uniquely um, uniquely positioned to do this in the fitness industry was because I had the community already, mm -hmm. right? So we already had hundreds of thousands of trainers who um, could have been both the producers and the consumers. And part of our rollout plan was basically going to five hundred of them that already produced this kind of stuff and bringing them in and loading it into the system first, uh, and 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 doing it. But what, what took this down at the end of it was that if you think about the actual like financial model for something like this, you're talking about microtransactions. Because when, if you write an article on low back health and Amber, you buy it, you're going to sell that article for say five bucks. Mm -hmm. Amber, you're going to buy it for five bucks. Like when you're probably going to expect to get $4.50 out of that. And then you incorporate payment processing and all that kind of thing. There's like pennies right. per transaction for the website. Um, and then there's and then there's all the website operational costs and stuff like that you gotta overcome. So you gotta do massive volume. The reason that teacher pay teacher works is because when somebody becomes a teacher, that's often their career. They'll be a teacher for 20 or 30 years. And as a result, if you acquire a teacher as a customer, odds are that teacher is going to be a customer for 20 or 30 years. So your lifetime value starts to make sense because they're going to be in it for a lot of years. In the fitness industry, that's not the case. The majority of people in the fitness industry, even if they're doing well, don't stay in the fitness industry for a decade plus. Um, and so, you know, when we actually like looked at the numbers, it just made no sense, which is why I kind of laugh like anytime because I get these messages at least once a week. Somebody's like, hey, I'm, I'm solving a big problem in the fitness industry. I'm going to create a database where trainers can list their services and clients can come find them. I'm like, all right, I don't want anything to do with that, first of all. I wish you the best. I hope that you can solve this problem. But I also believe that this is an impossible problem to solve because I actually owned ratemytrainer.com years ago. And I was going to build a rate my trainer website that was going to be a search database. I also own trainer pay trainer. I've looked into these models inside and out. And I can tell you right now, they don't work for personal training in the fitness industry. Um, but, but also, I wish that it did. And if anybody has any ideas of like, how to make something like this work, I mean, it doesn't even have to be like, I, I think it does have to be a business, but like there needs to be a way for our industry to share resources and work together more. It's ridiculous that everybody's, and there's been like a couple people over the years who have built like an email marketing system where like as part of the email marketing system, we provide you with email newsletters to send out. And it's like, you just like hired a bunch of like crappy copywriters from Asia or something like that to write terrible articles that like, like it has to be good. Right. And the only way to really ensure good is to have user generated and user reviewed materials. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's project Odin. And, and I tell you this because when, when you see stuff like quick coach, you're like, Oh my God, they just like hit this like 
they hit it perfectly. Like, like they hit fire. Like, oh my God, they just nailed this thing. Like they knew exactly what needed to be there, exactly what didn't need to be there. They knew exactly what the market needed and what was missing. And it's like, nothing happens overnight. We spent six months. I spent probably 50 to $75,000 just in salaries and research and stuff like that on this concept that at the time felt like a big failure because we realized after all of this work, we're like, nah, this won't work. And the one person who basically never tells you what he really thinks and just like asks you questions said, this is an idea for somebody else. Uh, <laughs> but what did I learn over the course of that process? Well, I learned, I went in deep into what trainers need, what trainers really desire. I learned more about the problems that trainers have. I really, really started to study user interface, particularly large data user interfaces, search functionalities, categorization functionalities amongst web-based interfaces, both mobile and desktop. And all of those things then went into helping make Quick Coach as good and as simple and as targeted and as user-friendly as what it is. Now, did I know that at the time? No, I felt like a fucking failure. And this is the message that I want to lead you with before I go pee, is <laughs> as you're working on something, no matter what it is, it's never a bad idea to go all in on an idea. Odds are that idea is going to turn into something that's going to be game changing are actually pretty small. If you, if you look at the history of like great businesses, I mean, even on the biggest scale and great business people, right? In, in almost no case was that their first business or even their second or even their third. Like Bezos might be the only one and he's just a mutant. But, but in almost every case, they have a graveyard of stuff, but the graveyard of stuff was not a waste of time retroactively, retrospectively. It, 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 they, in every step of the way, they took things, you know, you look at like Steve Jobs and the famous story of how he used to sneak into classes and took a, took a class on different fonts and different, different, um, different ways of writing. I don't remember what the, like Typography. he took like a calligraphy. Yeah, he took, well, it wasn't called typography because there weren't computers, mm. but it was like, it was a calligraphy class that mm. he snuck into. And one of the things that made Apple stand out right from the beginning was how beautiful their fonts were. Well, mm. their fonts were beautiful because Jobs basically stumbled randomly onto a calligraphy class years earlier. And when you take on a project Again, the odds that that project are going to turn into something that is what you think it is, is so slim. But what, what, what really will make the difference for you is this weird concoction, meshing combination of all of these different things you learn and understand through the experiences of your life that you're able to uniquely put together in a way that solves a problem better than that problem has been solved before. That doesn't happen on your first go around. And so Project Odin, yeah, that was a great idea for somebody else. But if it wasn't for Project Odin and about 10 other things I've done over the years, Amber, you can back me up. Most of them have never seen the light of day. Maybe we'll talk about more of them here. Quick Coach wouldn't exist. And even if, even if we did Quick Coach um, without doing all of those, we wouldn't have nailed Quick Coach as much as we nailed it on day one. And the reason that we nailed it on day one is because it's probably the 15th thing I've tried. So Quick Coach for, came from porn is what I'm getting from the story. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, if you think about like is a almost anything that is like meaningful on the internet, a lot of it actually came from porn right? <laughs> because a lot of the money on the internet, particularly the early internet went into porn. So all of the, I mean, advertising 
web advertising, banner advertising, eventually retargeting advertising, all started with the pornography industry. Those um, user generated content. Stupid. What's that? Those banners are a nuisance. <laughs> well, they're so, a nuisance now, so I've but, heard. but it was. Yeah, that's what I've heard. people but, have told me. But, uh, <laughs> but like, like, organizing massive <laughs> amounts of content and like search and categorization and stuff like that all came from, from pornography. Um, and so it's like anything else in this world, which is if you, if you want to benefit from something, you don't necessarily have to like that thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can, you can take what's useful from a thing and not agree with the thing. You don't need to agree with everything, something or somebody does right. in order to say, Hey, there's this good little tidbit here that I can take and use that to better myself or to better what I do. Or you could okay. agree. 